Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you guys all know, I'm sure already, Neil Peart, the longtime drummer for Rush, has recently passed away, I think at the age of 67 years old. He lost his battle with brain cancer. It really came as a shock to me. Uh, my dad is a longtime Rush fan. He's the reason why I listened to Rush in the first place. And I remember, you know, I was doing things as one does and I got a text from my dad saying did you hear about Neil Peart right away I, I knew what it was because that's just how life goes I and mean, it's always something tragic uh, that happens and the irony behind the whole thing is that I had just filmed a reaction to Tom Sawyer which I had been really, really excited to do, and then literally a, a couple of days after I started the editing process on that video, I find out that Neil Peart has indeed passed away, and it was a really difficult thing for me to process and understand, and not because, I mean, it's not my first in encounter with death, and I lost some very close family members to me before, and I've gone through the grief process and things like that, but herein lies the reason why I really felt that I needed to uh, talk about Neil Peart, uh, to really talk about who he was and what he meant to me as a as a drummer and i really wanted to go ahead and share it with you guys i thought about several days that's why this video is so much later than uh, than when it first happened i thought for several days how i would approach this how would i talk about this because i really did feel the need to talk about this one of the greatest drummers that i had the pleasure of listening certainly and uh, a drummer that is greatly regarded and respected among a lot of drummers and a lot of music aficionados as well as people that really enjoy rock. So I debated a long time how to honor him just because he did mean so much to me and to so many people. And the fact that I do run a drumming channel, it just I just could not not talk about him. And I debated for a long time. I came up with a few ideas. Uh, I wanted to react to one of his drum solos, possibly his most famous drum solo, which he more he played it a lot the same the same drum solo he played several times and he would add to it and take from it and and really refined that drum set solo you know throughout the years and i thought about reacting to that and i want i still want to do that it just didn't feel like it was going to have the personal touch that I wanted for the video. And I also wanted to do a video about why I think he is such a great drummer, you know, different points uh, explaining why I think he's such a great drummer, which I think I still will do in the future. But also, again, that didn't really feel like it had the personal touch that it needed. Plus, it would take a while for me to put something like that together. And I really wanted to put something out as soon as possible. So I decided to just before I, I did that to go ahead and come out and talk about my history with Neil Peart because I think it really is an important history. And he really had a big, big hand in shaping who I am today as a drummer. So my my affinity for Neil Peart started way back when I was like 12 or 13 years old. And everybody was getting into musicians and especially like drummers like my drummer friends are like oh have you heard of this drummer and that drummer and i'm like dude i don't even i hardly even listen to music what do you want from me leave me alone uh but my dad was a huge rush fan and my uncle was a drummer uh back in the day as a matter of fact i bought my first drum set from said uncle and they both recommended that i listen to neil peart and i was like i mean okay and Tom Sawyer was the first Rush song that I ever heard from from Rush. And it was the first time that I actually actively listened to the drum set player. Before, I don't know, I've always had a thing for vocals. So even as a kid, I was always singing and trying to play different, you know, sing different parts and stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But I had never really listened to the drum set part. And But I had always liked percussion and drum set. I kind of forced my way into the school percussion program after a long story that's probably a story for another day um but i kind of wedged my way into into drum set uh in terms of jazz band and you know i started really paying attention to to, to drums and drum set and and tom sawyer was the first one that i ever listened to actively and it's for sure the first one that i actually 
got down in my hands and feet and and listened to it. That, the, granted, there were parts in that song that there was absolutely no way that I was going to play as a 12-year-old beginner drum set player. There was just no way, especially starting and finishing with the speed of those 16-note hat uh patterns that that he plays there was no way i was gonna ever play that and it's funny because and i didn't really have a lot of like big interests as as a middle schooler as a 12 year old and i remember in one class they wanted us to make a bookmark it was the computer class and they wanted us to make a bookmark of something that we liked and i was like well i mean i play video games but that's not cool you don't want to admit to people at least back then you don't want to admit to people that you were into video games now i guess it's kind of a cool thing to be into video games but back then it was not something that you wanted to admit so i was like you know what i don't really really want to admit that i'm into into video games but i was like hey you know what music is cool i can admit to that so i i gravitated towards that one guy that i had heard a few times i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna make a bookmark about music but i can't just do any music it's got to be something that i care about so i ended up settling and i don't know what happened to that bookmark but it was a really cool picture of neil peart and that's kind of where it where it, it all started so then i i made it to high school obviously neil peart was still a big influence in my life it, that's when i started kind of listening to his drum solo back in the day when you would obtain music by less than advisable means i guess you could say um, but I had gotten my hands on some of his drum solo, that drum solo that I'm talking about that I talked about earlier that I wanted to go ahead and react to. Uh, I got an audio copy of that one and he plays the electric xylophone, I guess you could call it. And I got a hold of that and I would, I would listen to that drum solo a lot. I could probably play it back for you section by section. So that drum solo in and of itself really influenced how I started to play solos. I'm sure there are videos of me out there where I'm playing something very similar to what Neil Peart plays in that in that drum solo and it was it was a big influence in my soloing per se looking back on it from the jazz perspective it probably wasn't the best influence for me at the time but um it really it really was a big influence and you know I got a little bit older and I started listening to stuff that I was, you know, playing more. Like, for example, my new favorite drummer as a senior became Dave Weckl. I remember walking in, I think, the summer of my senior year to my band room, and <laughs> the band director was blaring some jazz music over the speakers. And I remember asking him, because I really liked the way the, the guy was playing. I was like, hey, who's this? And he was like, oh, that's Dave Weckl. And from then on, he became one of my favorite drummers as much as Neil Peart was and I really started drawing influence from Dave Weckl and then I started listening to other drummers like Vinnie Cayuta, Tony Royster Jr. and Neil Peart kind of kind of you know ended up on on the back burner for me just because the circles that I was in were not rock drum circles they were jazz drum circles you know my instructors my friends that played jazz it it just didn't fit cohesively and then I graduated high school I continued in those circles and then I kind of came back full circle to, to Neil Peart and I really started listening to him with a practiced ear. And not only that, but I started to realize, you know, I started to, to, to see some of the things that, that he was doing. I found out that he played jazz for the uh, with the Buddy Rich band. And so I listened to that. And then I think that was back in the 90s when he first played with them, the Buddy Rich tribute. And then I listened to him again. I think in 2008, he played with the Buddy Rich Band again, and I was just really, really proud of how far he had come in the 90s. I remember him talking about in the 90s, he really, really disliked the way he played in the 90s with the Buddy Rich Tribute Band. So he studied, he had people teach him, he got better at his craft, the, the jazz craft, and he came back and, and played with the Buddy Rich Tribute Band and was a very different drummer than he was when he first played with them in the 90s. Not that he was bad in the 90s, it wasn't bad, but it was a little... Uh, in terms of jazz drumming, a little square. But, you know, I, I really had so much respect for him and the fact that he went back and learned and the fact that he could play jazz. And, and, and as soon as I found out that he could play jazz, this is when I really started touting the fact that he really is one of the greatest drummers of our age, specifically because he's so versatile. And because he, jazz for me is such a difficult discipline to be able to do it as a drummer, no offense to the rock drummers, but I think jazz, proper jazz drum playing is just crazy. I mean, there's so many subsects of, of, 
of jazz. You can fit mambo in there. You can fit uh, swing. You can fit funk. You can fit fusion. There are so many things jazz drumming wise that you can do that it really takes a talented and special and a lot of you know dedication as a jazz drummer to be able to do that. So I found that very very respectable when it came to to Neil Peart and he came full circle around to being one of my top favorite Neil, uh, one of my top favorite drummers. And, you know, that was a couple of years ago. And then here I am again, coming back full circle after doing more studying and more drumming. And I really, for this channel, I really wanted to go back and analyze him as a drummer again with a more practiced ear, with a more practiced eye to see what he's doing, what he's not doing. And just as I was starting to study him again, you know, I got another sense of, wow, this guy's really good. And then a couple of days later, you know, it, it happens, but it's, it's not really something that I want to dwell on. It's something that I just want to express my appreciation for Neil Peart. And he's really the, the person that put me on the drumming track. And that's something that I will be forever grateful uh, to him for having done that. And just so much respect for for Neil Peart and really all all I can really say hopefully he wherever he is whatever is going on whatever I don't I don't know about the existential part of life uh, but hopefully he knows how grateful I am to him for having put me on on this path to begin with before marching band before really anything when I had just started playing jazz uh, just started playing drum set really. Uh, Neil Peart was there putting me on that path. So this is really in memoriam for Neil Peart, uh, really a thank you. And I, I hope he accomplished everything that he wanted to be. In my eyes, I think he did. Always getting better as a musician should. And uh, I know it doesn't mean much, but I'm really proud of everything that he did. I hope wherever he is, he is entertaining whoever he is with, Buddha, God, <laughs> uh, whatever other gods the Scientology uh, leader Tom Cruise <laughs> I don't know I hope he's entertaining them with, with his drumming and for sure he will be missed uh, by a lot of us drummers and musicians and rock aficionados and that's that's pretty much it uh, so thanks so much for stopping by to watch the video I know it's something not something that I usually do uh but i appreciate you guys uh coming by to watch listening to my story and uh hopefully we'll see you guys next time and hopefully uh i'll get around to those other videos you know uh, reacting to tom sawyer well i'll put that up later uh, it's already filmed and everything i just need to finish the editing portion but it just didn't feel right posting that uh after you know what happened with neil peart uh, but it'll be up later and then obviously i would like to react to his to his uh solo and then we'll and then i'd like to talk about why i think he's such a great drum set player so we're gonna get a lot of neil peart uh related content here in the near future uh but thanks again thanks so much for watching and if you liked the video don't forget to hit that like button and if you really liked it don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one see ya